All right, so today we are talking about the Select app from Narrative. Uh, this is a piece of software that I've been using for quite a while now. I think I picked it up and started using it sometime around like August, September of last year. Uh, really, as I was getting into the busiest part of my wedding season, um, if you're a wedding photographer, and certainly if you've been one for the last you know couple of years, then you're probably well aware of just how insanely busy last year was for weddings. Um, and for myself, it was no different. It was hands down the busiest year I've ever had. Um, and so that meant that, you know, throughout different phases of last year, it was an absolute challenge to stay on top of everything from, you know, responding to emails to getting back to initial inquiries to simply just editing and delivering all the galleries for the weddings that I was shooting throughout the year. And so I was really looking for something to help me through that calling, selection, editing process. Um, and that's how I got into using Select and making it a part of my workflow. And I think it's got some really cool, unique features uh, that you know help it stand apart from some of the other kind of similar software options that are out there. Um, and I've been enjoying using it, so I just want to do a quick video, you know, walk you through some of those key features, some of the things that I really like about it, and then uh, hopefully, you know, towards the end of the video, you'll have a better idea as to whether or not it's something that you might want to give a try and uh, potentially work into your own workflow. So, with that said, let's hop on over to the computer. I'll pull up a sample gallery and we'll walk through the app uh, together. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we are on the computer. I've already got the app pulled up and I've got a sample gallery created with some images pulled in uh, from a wedding that I did earlier. And uh, before we actually get into talking about some of the features, uh, let's just kind of get an overview of what we're looking at here really quick. Uh, so first things first, uh, down here along the bottom, we've got our film strip, our ribbon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with thumbnails of all the images that are pulled into our select gallery. Um, and then obviously the selected image is pulled up here large in the center. And then across the top, we've got some, you know, filtering options for star rating and color labels, uh, not dissimilar to what you would see in Lightroom. Um, and then there's some sorting options here by capture time and, and some other uh, possibilities. But for the most part, that's what we're looking at. Uh, I will say though, the first time you open this app, it'll actually look quite a bit different. Um, I've got some preferences applied, uh, but if you go up here, if I go to preferences, go to interface, uh, the first time you open it, uh, you'll have your uh, film strip orientation will be more vertical up here on the left-hand side, and then it'll be more of a light colored background. Uh, I don't like this. Um, I prefer to have this in Lightroom to be more similar in layout. I just like that continuity between both programs. Uh, but again, it's pretty quick. You can just go up here to preferences, again, go to interface, and you can change it to be on the bottom, and then you can change the background color. Um, I'm all about that dark mode life, so Obsidian, Obsidian it is for me. Um, and then that gets it back to, to where I had it before. So pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's dive into actually using Select. So the first thing I wanna talk about is uh, the speed of the app. And what I mean by speed is, you know, as I begin to use my left and my right arrow keys to cycle through images, um, what I mean by speed is how quickly each new image um, loads up. Um, for me, this is one of the most important things, no matter what app I'm using for doing selects or calling a wedding gallery. Um, you know, and the great thing about select is just how quick it is. Like each new image basically loads almost instantaneously. There's really no lag, there's no waiting. Um, and for me, that's really important. Uh, back in the day with Lightroom, it used to be, in my experience, even with all my settings, you know, somewhat optimized or whatever, it used to be like a one to two second lag for each new image to load. And what I mean by that is, for each new image to load well enough to where you could tell whether or not it was in focus and whether or not the expression was good. Um, and just generally whether or not it was an image that you wanted to, you know, give a rating to and potentially edit it later on. Um, Lightroom was just, it was so slow. And, you know, one to two seconds per image may not seem like a big deal, but when you're talking about a wedding gallery with, you know, two, four, 5,000 images, you know, one to two seconds per image, I mean, that adds up to minutes over a wedding gallery. and you know, again, trying to get through as many weddings as possible last year, um, you know, you really, you know, no matter what, you want something that's gonna be quick um, and that's gonna allow you to cycle through images uh, basically instantaneously. And Select allows me to do that. And that's and that's awesome. And in full disclosure, like I will say that, you know, Adobe's done a great job over the years of improving Lightroom. And I would say that, um, you know, Lightroom with the right settings applied and in library module, it's it's pretty damn quick. It's, it's almost in instantaneous as well. Um, but, that's where Select really goes above and beyond. It's all the other features that Select adds in addition to its quickness that I think make it uh, a really great tool. 
And the first of those additional features that I really like are the eye and focus assessments. Uh, so in this image right here, actually, if we go ahead and if we zoom in, um, we'll see that each one of their faces, uh, the bride and the groom, they both have this little symbol right next to their face. And I mean, you can kind of see it already. If I hover, it'll tell you exactly what it's trying to tell you. So the top symbol is telling you whether or not the eyes are open or not. And then the bottom symbol is telling you whether or not it's in focus. So here, hovering over that symbol, it's telling me that his eyes are mostly open and that he's in great focus. And then if I hover over her symbol, it's telling me that her eyes are fully open and she's in perfect focus. And, um, and that's really useful when you're trying to call through a gallery because it's great just to see that, that visual representation of whether or not their eyes are open and whether or not they're in focus. Uh, it just saves you time from having to you know hit the space bar and zoom in on an image um, and do a quick scan manually to see if they're, they're in focus. Um, I know that Select does a really good job of, of getting that correct, so I really don't have to zoom in to, uh, to confirm. If I see all green, I know it's good to go. Um, if I like everything else about the image, I can give it a rating and I can move on. Now, with that said, um, one other feature I wasn't even going to talk about, but I just thought of it. Um, if you hit the space bar actually within select, um, it won't zoom you into the center of the image. It actually zooms you into um, a face. If there's a person in the image, it'll zoom you to a face. Um, so in this case, it zoomed into the bride's face. And then if I hit the up and down arrow keys, it'll actually allow me to cycle through um, all the different faces in that image. Um, I just remembered that that's actually a feature. <laughs> it's not something that I use a lot, um, but it's another kind of a cool um, little thing built into Select as well. So if you do prefer to zoom in and if you wanna kind of scan the faces that way, uh, that's another option. Uh, so if we go to this image, for example, this group photo, if I hit the space bar and zoom in, um, I can use the up and down arrows and it'll cycle through um, each face. So that's another way to kind of do a quick scan. Like in Lightroom, what I used to do is I would just use my mouse and then just click into it and then just kind of click and drag um, and scan back and forth. You can still do that in select as well, um, or you can do the, the space bar and the up and down arrow keys. Uh, that's another another option as well. But with that said, going back to uh, eye and focus assessments, um, you know, the eye and focus assessments are great for photos of individual people um, or couples, uh, but they're really, really useful in my opinion uh, and most useful for group photos. Um, when you have a big group of people, again, you don't have to like zoom in, you don't have to hit the space bar or whatever, and then like click and, and drag and scan. Uh, with these visual representations, you can just do a quick scan of the symbols. And if you see all green, you know you're good to go. Uh, and again, if you like everything else about the image, you can just do that selection and then you can move on um, and, and not have to think about it. So just, it, it can save you a lot of time when you're looking at those group photos, not having to zoom in. Uh, with that being said though, this is actually, this photo is a good example of one where it's maybe kind of on the edge, right? Because you do see that uh, the bride's brother and her father both have yellow symbols. Uh, so if we hover, it's telling me that, you know, his eyes are partially open and that his eyes are partially open. So. Now, is it because they're blinking or is it because they're just squinting or is it just because that's just what their eyes naturally look like when they when they smile? And if you've been doing wedding photography for any amount of time, you know that some people, when they smile, um, the way they smile and with the way they smile with their eyes, sometimes they just have very narrowly opened eyes. Um, it's just natural to how they look. Um, and so with that being said, if you are looking for another way of, of quickly scanning an image, um, Select actually has another tool built into it and that's called the close-ups panel. So if you go up here to the upper right-hand corner, um, you can see there's this little tab, this little button, and if you hover, it'll give you the uh, the keyboard shortcut as well. But if you click on that, it'll bring up the close-ups panel, which is named that, I think, for obvious reasons. It's giving you a panel with close-up images of everybody's face. Um, and this can be another really useful way of just doing a really quick scan uh, to make sure that everybody's um, expression, um, you know, everybody's, you know, focus, everything looks good without, again, having to hit the space bar and zoom in and waste time with additional clicks. You know, you can just keep this panel open um, and then as you cycle through photos, you can just do a quick scan of everybody um, until you find a photo where you're happy with everybody's expression, their focus, uh, you know, whether or not their eyes are open and all that. So. Again, just another really cool feature built into Select that makes it a little bit more unique um, and definitely something that, again, is really, really useful for those group photos. And again, if you've done any number of weddings, you know that you know a large number of your photos at the end of a wedding day are just group photos. Um, and when you're dealing with group photos, you know, again, you're gonna take you know four or five or six photos of a single group because you're looking for just to get one photo, you know, where everybody's looking at the camera, 
um, everybody's smiling, everybody's in focus, nobody's you know you know looking off in the wrong direction. Um, and once you find that one photo of a particular grouping of people, and you you find one you're happy with, and you make a selection, uh, you don't have to look at the rest of the photos. You just want to move on to the next grouping of people, and then find that one photo within that group, right? Um, and so anything that you can do to speed up that process of finding that one photo within a group um, definitely has an opportunity to speed up your, your selection and calling process. Um, and so again, this close-ups panel and all these other um, focus and eye assessments um, are all really, really great tools for that and can save you a ton of time. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. And then let's move on to really kind of the last um, big or last two big features that I really want to talk about. So um, let's actually scroll backwards a little bit. Um, I think I saw a couple in here. Oh, let's see. Yep, here we go. And then so with this image, if we go down here to the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see that there's this new symbol down here. And if we hover over it, it'll tell you what it's basically what it means. Um, it's saying it's very likely there are better images in the six image scene. And again, this is something else I really like about Select is that, you know, pretty much with most things, if you hover over it, it'll give you a little pop-up telling you, you know, what it's trying to tell you. Um, and so again, if we go over here to this other image with the yellow symbol, if we hover over that one, it's saying that it's fairly likely that there are better images within the six image scene. So with that said, essentially what's going on here is whenever you create a new gallery within Select, another thing that the software is doing is it's scanning all of your images and it's looking for you know groups of images that are very, very visually similar, right? And so again, this is another really useful feature, especially for those group photos, because you're gonna have a lot of these, right? So again, when you're taking these group photos, you're gonna have you know four, five, six, eight images that are all very, very similar. And so the software is gonna kind of group everything into, or it's gonna group all those very similar images into a scene. And then within that scene, it's going to take into account all the eye and focus assessments and anywhere where you've got a lot of red or a lot of yellow, it's gonna give you a warning and basically tell you that, hey, this is probably not gonna be one of the better images um, within this group of images that are very similar, right? There's probably gonna be better images that you can select from. And again, so that's a really, really useful feature for saving you time. And the best way that it can save you time is really just going up here to the top. So again, at the very beginning, I mentioned there's these, these filters up here. I think we're all familiar with filtering by star rating and color rating, but within select, there's also a filter by image assessment rating. So if you wanted to, if you've been using select long enough and you know and you're comfortable that select does a really good job of identifying images that are not gonna be the best images um, and not images that you're gonna be likely to want to use, you can just go up here and filter by images without an assessment and it's gonna get rid of all those red and yellow labeled filtered images. And then it's going to allow you to just focus your time and your energy um, on the photos that don't have one of those warnings on them. Um, and so, you know, in this case, I've got a sample gallery pulled up. It's only got 80 or so images. So we're really only filtering out five images here. But, you know, if you're looking at an entire wedding, you know, where you've got thousands of images, I mean, you're looking at potentially dozens, if not hundreds of images that you can immediately just filter out of consideration. And then as you're going and you're, you know, using your arrow keys to go through your images, you're eliminating a whole, you know, a whole crop of photos um, you know, from, you know, ever having to be looked at. You don't have to waste time moving through them or looking at them, even just for a brief second. You can just eliminate them completely. And again, just save yourself um, a boatload of time by not even having to consider those images. So again, another really cool, unique feature built into it. And what I'll say overall is, the thing I like about Select is the fact that it is essentially, it's giving you enhancements. It's giving you tools on top of you know your own ability to kind of go through and do your own selections and calling, which is what I really like. Uh, there's some other kind of calling selection software that exists out there that's a little bit more heavy handed and really tries to do all of the filtering and the, the selections of your best images for you. And personally, I don't really like that. Uh, maybe it's just by my own personal nature, I tend to be a little bit more um, I want to have a little bit more control over what is being selected and what is not. I don't want to leave it all up to, um, you know, artificial intelligence or software to make those selections for me. What I like is what Select does, and that gives me additional tools to help me make the selections myself. Um, and so overall, for that reason, I really, my preference is to use Select for doing all my selections, my calling throughout a wedding gallery. So. Um, again, just a lot of really cool tools, especially for filtering through um, all those group images. So uh, yeah, I mean, those are really kind of the key features uh, built into Select. And again, we kind of talked about some of the preferences uh, you can go into and change 
Um, you can go up here as well to the upper right hand corner. There's actually a shortcut to get back into the preferences. Um, and you can kind of go through if you download this for yourself, you can look through some of the options that are in here. Um, for example, there's some options for changing the, uh, the assessment colors. Um, so if you want to do that, you can make some changes there. I showed you the interface changes, but you can always go up in there. You can look at that. And then as well as um, that, there's also a shortcut for, well, there's a shortcut for shortcuts. So select is really heavy on trying to encourage you to use keyboard shortcuts to speed things up. Um, and if you ever forget what a keyboard shortcut is, there's a, a convenient button right there uh, that allows you to kind of get back to that. I wish more apps did that. I think that's really useful. Um, so that's there as well. Um, and then once you're done doing all your selections, giving your star ratings, your color, you know, your color labels, ratings, whatever you want to call it, um, from there, it's really easy to get these selections into Lightroom. Um, you can use the ship feature and that'll get your images uh, that you've selected into Lightroom. Um, if you like to do your calling before bringing it into Lightroom, me personally, my workflow is I'll bring everything into Lightroom first um, and then I do my selections afterwards. So for me, that process is a little bit different. The first thing that I have to do is create um, XML files. Uh, but then once you do that, you just go back to Lightroom and um, and then what all I have to do is read that metadata from files and it'll bring back in all the uh, the star ratings, any color, ra any color labels or ratings that I've applied. It'll immediately bring all that back into Lightroom. Um, and then it allows me to start the editing process. So it's pretty quick, pretty seamless, really does not add a lot of time to your workflow, um, getting that data uh, transferred back and forth between Lightroom and, and Select. So, all right, so I mean, that's really kind of the, the main features I really wanted to hit on with Select. Again, it's been something that I've been using for quite a while now. I've been finding it really useful. So hopefully kind of give you an idea as to whether or not it's something that you might want to use and incorporate into your own workflow as well, which then kind of segues into the next thing I want to talk about, which is price. So there are two options. There's a free version and then there's a pro version. And they actually recently just made some big changes to the way their pricing structure is set up. So it used to be that back in the day, the free version um, didn't have access to all the features built into Select and everything that I talked about in this video. Uh, but recently they changed things around a little bit and they made it so that even the free version and the completely free version, like you don't even have to put in a credit card or anything, um, the, the completely free version gives you access to all the features. The only catch is that you can only use it for up to, I think, six projects in one month. So if you are somebody who does a lot of volume and you're doing consistently like seven, eight or more weddings per month, then you're gonna need to upgrade to the pro version. So if you're a larger studio or maybe you've got associate photographers who work underneath your brand and you're just, you've got that level of volume, then you are gonna need to pay for that pro license, that pro version to get access to more projects per month. But if you're somebody like me who primarily is a single kind of person studio and you are not regularly doing more than six weddings per month, um, you're likely gonna be able to get away with the free version just fine. Um, and so I think that's really cool. But even regardless, if you just wanna give it a try and see if it's something that's, uh, that's useful for you and that you can incorporate into your workflow, you can download it completely free, give it a spin and see if it works for you. Um, so ultimately pretty cool. Oh, and one other thing that I'll mention really quickly before I forget, and this is kind of a big one. Uh, if you are a Windows user, you're gonna be a little bit out of luck here. Unfortunately, Narrative, uh, both of their apps are only available on Mac. Uh, they do not make Windows options. Uh, with that being said though, you know if you've watched this video and you think it's something that you would like to have and you are a Windows user, uh, definitely send them an email or ping them on social media or whatever, uh, and just let them know. You know. I'm sure if there's enough interest from Windows users, PC users uh, for a Windows version of Select or even a, their other app publish, uh, I'm sure they would piece that together. I'm sure it's really just a matter of you know how much interest is out there. So if you've watched this and you're a Windows user and you want that definitely don't be afraid to ping them and let them know um, so that's something else to consider and then the final thing that I'll mention really quickly is that um, their other app that they have out is called publish I actually have another video that I did on that app um, actually a couple years ago I've been using it for a long time if you want to look at that if you want to hear more about that app you can watch that video I'll link to it down below um, again that's something that I've been using for a long time it's something that I continue to use and pay for to this day um, so if you don't want to go watch that video you can go check that out as well um, but yeah other than that um, that's really all there is uh, to say for this video. Uh, hopefully you found it useful, um, gave you an idea as to whether or not maybe this is a new tool for you. Um, but regardless, um, if you've used it before, if you like using it, if you've got any thoughts, comments, maybe you've used it in the past and there were some features missing that you really wanted, leave those comments down below. Maybe Narrative will read it and they can incorporate those into future versions of the software. Um, but otherwise, guys, that's really gonna be it for this video. So uh, until next time, take care, stay safe. Keep shooting, and uh, as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.